weeknight ground meat tacos are a staple in my house. And yes, we usually eat them on Tuesdays. But every once in a while, I like to slow it down and make something with a bit more flavor, like cochinita pibil, which is a traditional Mexican recipe from the Yucatan region. And it involves cooking a whole pig with a bunch of annatto seeds and some banana leaves, and it tastes amazing. Now, today I'm gonna show you how to translate that recipe for a home kitchen. And it starts with annatto seeds. They have a very mild, fruity flavor, but they add a lot of color. So we're gonna start off with a quarter cup of those. To that, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of black peppercorns, a tablespoon of allspice berries, two tablespoons of Mexican oregano, which has a very different citrusy floral flavor and actually comes from the lemon verbena family compared to that Mediterranean or Italian oregano, which actually comes from the mint family. So it is worth seeking out. Last but not least, a cinnamon stick. Also going into the spice paste is two heads of garlic. I'm just gonna put it over high heat and we're gonna let it toast about six minutes until that garlic begins to soften and gets spotty brown. Just gonna set these aside, let them cool before we peel them. Back on the stove, the skillet goes. Gonna add about two tablespoons of vegetable oil. And now's when we get to toast the spices and really bring out their flavor. So we're gonna add them to the pan and they cook very quickly, only about 30 seconds. Oh, and you can see how that oil has started to turn color. That's what we want. I'm gonna turn the heat off. All right, I'm gonna set it aside, let it cool for a bit, and let's go back to that garlic time to peel all this garlic. What I like to do is use a paring knife and I trim off the garlic bottom and then the peel really just falls right off. Now it's time to blend it all into a paste. Next, we're gonna add the spices. Gonna add some salt, about a tablespoon of table salt and a little secret ingredient. This is liquid smoke, which is actually an all natural product. It's just condensed smoke vapor and a little goes a long way, just a teaspoon. And now we're gonna add some orange juice. Traditionally, they use bitter oranges, so we're gonna offset our orange juice with a little vinegar. Onto the blender this goes. We're gonna let this go until it's a nice, fine, even paste. And exactly how long that takes really depends on your blender. I'm just gonna measure out a quarter cup, and it's gonna go right onto the pork. And now we're gonna get to the last two ingredients. This is just a nice big onion. I'm gonna cut it into big slices. And notice I didn't peel it. I did that on purpose. I think it's easier to peel an onion after you cut it. So I'm gonna put these on a nice rimmed baking sheet that I can bring out to the grill. Last but not least, finally, the pork. This is a four pound pork butt from the shoulder region, which turns really meltingly tender after you cook it for a while. I'm just gonna cut this nice big roast into two pieces. They'll just cook a little more quickly and there's a little more surface area to get more flavor in. These are gonna go onto a sheet pan. All right, now things are about to get messy because now's when we're gonna add that spice paste to the pork. And as I mentioned, those annatto seeds add coloring to food. They will also stain your hands. I like to put on gloves. Put half of it on one, half of it on the other. And I'm just gonna rub this spice rub all over the pork. Mm. All right, so now it's time to take these gloves off and head out to the grill. I've been heating this grill up with all the burners on high for about 15 minutes, so it is good and hot. Then I'm gonna clean the grill. First, I'm gonna run a nice grill cleaning brush over to get off any big pieces. And next, I'm gonna take a wad of paper towels, a nice pair of long tongs. This is some vegetable oil. And I'm just gonna rub the vegetable oil evenly over the grill grates, which helps clean them, but also helps season them and keep them a bit more nonstick. Now, time for the pork and onions. Oh, I'm just gonna put the pork right on the grill. We're just looking for a nice char on all sides. Same with the onions. The onions should take about 10 minutes, but the pork should really only take about six minutes. All right, so that pork is nicely charred on both sides. So I'm just gonna pull it off the grill. And yes, I'm using the same sheet pan here that had the raw food, but it's actually still raw. We're gonna cook it a lot further, so it's okay. So those onions have had a few more minutes and they are looking perfect. Nicely charred on both sides and softened. So I'm just gonna turn the grill off here. We're gonna let it cool down and we can head inside. We've got some great char on the pork and the onions. And now I'm gonna take the onion and put it right into the blender. I'm gonna blend that into the sauce. It adds a lovely flavor. All right, that is good. 
So we've got the braising liquid, and the last ingredient is eight ounces of banana leaves. And if you've never bought them before, you'll find them in the freezer, usually in a big package like this. And they thaw pretty quickly, and you give them a quick rinse, and then you can see it's just a big leaf from a banana tree. And now to use them, I'm just gonna slice them into long strips. So traditionally, when you make cochinita pabil, you have a whole pork and it's rubbed with spices and then wrapped in these banana leaves and cooked low and slow in the ground with hot stones. And these leaves trap in the heat and the moisture and they add a lovely floral grassy flavor that you really can't get any other way. So now that I've cut these banana leaves into nice strips, I'm gonna pound them to help release some of their oils and flavors. All right, we're gonna cook all of this sous vide, which means we're gonna cook it at 155 degrees in plastic bags for 22 to 26 hours. Now these are freezer bags, so they're nice and thick, and they're a gallon each. And I'm gonna put one pork roast into each bag, pour the sauce evenly into each bag, and remember that paste is a stainer, so I'm trying to be very careful not to get it all over the kitchen. Divide the banana leaves between the bags, Last but not least, four bay leaves in each bag. One, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna take the bag and just massage everything together so everything gets coated with that flavorful sauce. All right, so these bags are ready for the water. Now the trick when sous vide is to get as much air out of the bag as possible. Leave just a little bit open on the very end. And then you put it in the water and you let that water help squeeze out all the excess air. When you get most of the air out, you seal up the bag completely, and then you just wanna fix the bag to the rim with a clip. That just prevents it from moving around too much or letting the lip of the bag fall into the water, which could make a mess. These are gonna sit in this water again for 22 to 26 hours, and that is a long time. And as you can imagine, the water is gonna evaporate out of here unless we wrap it tightly on top. So this is where plastic wrap comes in. I'm just gonna wrap this with several layers of plastic wrap and that'll help trap the heat and the steam. Just a quick note here about safety. Cooking sous vide for this long is completely safe because although 155 degrees is on the low side, it's in there for such a long time that all the bacteria will be well gone by the time it's done. This pork has been cooking for 23 hours and it's time to unwrap it. Oh, 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 the smells coming out of the sous vide are amazing. I'm gonna reach in there with some tongs, grab that pork, and now there's a lot of flavorful juice in this bag. So I'm gonna drain it into a colander. That colander will catch the bay leaves and those banana leaves. Mmm, oh, look at this beautiful pork. Cut it up into pieces that are about half inch big. My knife doesn't even need to cut through this. It just falls apart. Oh, Time to marry the two. Meat, meet your sauce. I'm gonna season it with a little salt and a little pepper, and it's taco time. All right, so here I have a nice corn tortilla that I toasted. So there's the meat. I'm gonna put some scallions, some queso fresco, a few sliced radishes, some pickled red onions, and some habanero salsa. This is spicy, so <laughs> a little dollop will do ya. And you can get the recipe for the habanero salsa and the pickled red onions on our website. All right, it's been a long time waiting for this taco. <laughs> I'm speechless. It is so good. It has so much flavor. You get a little bit of the cinnamon, the allspice berries, the black pepper, and then the banana leaves. That is a taco. If you wanna make the ultimate taco, remember three things. First, make a spice paste. Second, char the pork and the onions on the grill. And lastly, cook the pork at 155 degrees for 22 to 26 hours. From America's Test Kitchen at Home, a killer recipe for sous vide cochinita pabil. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.